Hi everyone, my name is Courtney. I write under the pen names Lyra Parrish and I'm one half of the USA Today best-selling duo Kennedy Fox. And today I'm gonna give you an update video because it's been a hot minute since I have posted anything. I swear I blinked my eyes and February was gone and next thing I know we're like a week into March. Like what happened to last month? It is I, I'm still shocked like I kind of have whiplash and so here we are and just gonna give you a quick rundown of how February went for me and give you kind of like an update of what you can expect in the future from me so to go ahead and get started February was a crazy month as far as travel for me at the beginning of the month I was really worried that I was gonna get locked into my job because they were worried about a strike and everything else so I was basically told that I could essentially be locked into my job for two weeks that was very stressful for me because I had a lot of travel planned in February and like past Courtney didn't think about all the stuff that was going to take place this year when I decided that I was going to do all this travel. So it was very, very nerve wracking, but it all worked out. I didn't get locked in and I was actually able to like go home and sleep in my bed. So the second weekend of February, I was traveling for holidays with the Bells, signing with my partner as Kennedy Fox. And this signing was hosted in Dallas, which is about five and a half hours away from me in Texas. It was a great signing. I got to see a lot of my blogger friends and readers that I've never met before. Also authors that I've chatted with online but I've never actually met in person. And it was a highlight of my weekend just getting to actually like meet people and say hello to them. I have four hours of video that I need to cut together and I will have a vlog for that but it is very overwhelming with how much I recorded for that day. And eventually I will have that out if my schedule is anything like it was last year. It'll probably be six to eight months from now, but I do plan on releasing that and sharing that experience with you all. After the signing, I went to New York City and got to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway with the original London cast, and guys, the experience was absolutely amazing. I went with some of my best friends and my husband and we just had a fantastic time. If you love Harry Potter, if you are a part of that fandom, if JK Rowling <laughs> changed your life, um, I would definitely recommend going to see it. I did buy the book whenever it came out in 2016. I read it. I was actually in Dallas and I read it all the way down from Dallas to home. Um, the Cursed Child is actually a play if you don't have that book. It's the script for the show and I can tell you that though I read that like actually seeing it performed was just something completely different there was so much magic that is in the Harry Potter universe that you actually got to see with your own eyes on stage and it just it gives me chills talking about it it was so much freaking fun and if you have the opportunity, if you can afford it, I would say 100% to go see that show, just if not for the magical elements that are on stage. I did a lot of theater in college. I did theater all the, throughout high school. I am a theater kid, a thespian, if you want to call me that. And so I really appreciated what they were able to do on the stage. I mean, there was like one point where you're watching it and then like you hear like a clap or like them like, doing something and then the next time you blink they're in their robes like their hogwarts robes and i'm just like ah. it was amazing it was so good but i'm not going to ruin the show for you hashtag keep the secrets um if you get the opportunity 100 percent go see it next up that i did in february was i have agreed to be a part of the youtube show publishable meg latour which is with i riderly and caitlin johnson we are basically talking about self-publishing and traditional publishing and helping people decide which route is for them one or the other or both we're just trying to answer as many questions as we can regarding self-publishing and traditional publishing what's really cool about it is Caitlin is a literary agent so she even has like insight that I would never have like I don't ever think that I will become a literary agent like that's not in my future 100% but 
it's really cool to hear it from another point of view. And obviously she has authors that she has signed. She has pitched deals. She knows the behind the scenes stuff that many of us may not know. And Meg actually has experience in that as well. So I am linked up with two really amazing ladies and I'm so happy and humbled to be a part of it. And I look forward to doing that every month. If you want to watch the first episode, it's over on Meg's channel. I will put a little thing up here or up here wherever it goes you can go watch that we had some slight technical difficulties at the end so the show got cut off funny enough though we were like still talking for at least like five or ten minutes and didn't even know that we were no longer live until we started getting messages from people we did it live last time this time it's actually going to be pre-recorded and posted right here on my channel. If you're not subscribed, make sure to do that. If you want to get notifications for when something goes live, press the little bell next to the subscribe button and YouTube will let you know so you don't miss anything. This month we are going to be posting on March 20th. It's going to be the third Wednesday of every single month whenever we post our videos. Um, I don't know if every month is going to be a premiere or if we're going to go back to live. It just kind of depends on how YouTube is, guys. Um, how our internet connections are. It's going to be March 20th, the third Wednesday, and it's going to be right here. The topic this month is marketing for self-published authors and also for traditionally published authors. So if you have any questions regarding marketing from either of those standpoints, then make sure to message me on Instagram or message Meg or use the hashtag hashtag publishable on Twitter and get your questions in that way or leave the, your question down below. Um, as long as you post before we start recording, I will try to get your questions added in. So yeah, on March 20th, we'll see you here for the publishable episode number two. Guys, that was my February. I know. It it was so busy. It was so packed. The travel thrown in there, everything. I mean, I wrote about 35,000 words in January, and I think last month I wrote around 15,000, and this month I'm trying to write 50,000. So we've got a book to finish, and deadlines are looming, and it's tax season, and so everything is just a cluster right now in my world. But it's exciting, and I love every moment of it. To give you an insight of what I'm doing this month is the goal is to be very close to finishing Baby Yours. The goal is to have that book finished before the first one releases on April 24th. So we have about six weeks to write a book. And the last one was supposed to be 65,000 words and it ended up at 90,000 words. So apparently we do not know how to give people small books, which, hey, I know that our readers are there for it and um, we're there for it too. So I hope everybody enjoys it. Another thing that's going on in my world is I am trying to rebrand my backlist. I asked a lot of people on Facebook if they wanted to be brought along with me on that journey if they would like to see what I'm doing to rebrand my eight books and this is kind of what everybody said. There were a lot of comments. There were a lot of people who messaged me and said that they were so excited about me rebranding and redoing those books. And I am just like super pumped to do this. Like I was so proud of those books at one point and the fact that I am going to spend time to make them even better, to bring them up to the level that I am today excites the living you know what out of me. So with rebranding, that means basically not really starting over, but pretty much starting over. I'm planning to recover rewrite synopsises and also I am moving some books from first person past tense to first person present tense to make them more active. The Weakness series is getting transferred with the tense changes. Single is actually getting rewritten. Chapters are being removed. More chapters are being added. With that, the three novellas, they range between 150,000 words together. I'm going to condense and cut and tighten and add some more 
more stuff to it, delete things that I really do not like that's in that book now as I read it today, and I'm going to make it into one book, and it's going to be retitled. It will have a new cover. It will have a new synopsis. While the foundation is still the same on the book, there's going to be a lot of new content, so yeah. Uh, the plan for that is to release it in December, and basically, I'm going to bring you along with me as I accomplish all of those things for that book. Right now, I'm spending my lunch breaks at work trying to read through it and that's the only time that I'm really working on this. It is something that I've been wanting to do since I went to Sky Warren's Romance Mastermind conference that was held in October. I knew then that this is what I wanted to do. I heard C.D. Reese talk about revamping your backlist, the things that she did, and it just literally spoke to my heart and listening to her talk about that really changed my mindset and I had so many light bulb moments that listening to her there do that is what has sparked all of this. Um, a lot of people say, well, why? Why are you spending time on books that are already out there? And the main reason is because you will always find new readers, guys. And after you publish, your goal in the future is to find new readers. Just because you publish doesn't mean that you leave those books behind and, oh, who cares about them? Like, if people read them, oh well. You know, and that's been my attitude since I started writing under Kennedy Fox. Like, oh, I don't want to spend time on making those books better to find new readers. And that's not a good way to think, in my opinion. And, you know, I really thought hard and long about this, and it's something that I keep coming back to, so I am doing it. A lot of people say, well, why? Why would you redo your backlist if you've got Kennedy Fox? And the reality to that is, yes, I am writing under Kennedy Fox. Kennedy Fox is my one true love, guys. But Lyra Parrish is me. It's 100% me, and I was very, very proud of those books back in the day. I wanted everyone in the entire world to read them, and today, I don't feel the same about that. And I want to go back to that. I want to be like, you know what? Yes, I do write under Kennedy Fox, but if you want to read something that I've written by myself, go read my backlist. Like, you can go read my backlist if you want to. Not, oh yeah, I write under Kennedy Fox, do not go read Lyra Parrish. I've literally said those words, and that kind of hurts my heart that I'm not as confident about my books as I should be, so I'm changing that. And the goal is to have this completed... <laughs> I laugh because you know, I've got a crazy release schedule this year. The goal for that is to finish it by January 1st of 2020. I am not rushing it. I'm taking my time as I do this. Uh, when I relaunch, it's going to be done the right way. I'm not just going to be like, hey guys, um, I rewrote these books. Check them out. Like, I'm going to have cover reveals and re-release tours and review tours on these books. And I'm going to make sure that they're what I want them to be. And I'm going to be so freaking proud of them that it's not going to be an embarrassment. Those were the first books I wrote. I was still trying to find my voice. I was trying to find who I was as an author. And now I've got that. Before I started Kennedy Fox, I had found my voice. I had found who I was as a writer. And if I wouldn't have started Kennedy Fox, then I probably would have redone those books a lot sooner because in 2016, whenever I released Ace, I was like, man, I really want to go back and fix the weakness series, but I didn't do it. And then I had this new adventure and it wasn't a priority. And not that it's like a number one priority now, it is something that is on my list of things to do and get accomplished. Why? Why are you doing this if you're never going to release under Lyra again? And that's not the reality. I have never once ever, ever, ever said that I was never going to release under Lyra again. That Those words have never, ever come out of my mouth. And the reason for that is because I've always said that eventually I will release again under Lyra. My partner has heard me say that. She has told people that. Everybody knows this. I will release again under Lyra Parrish. Now, when that will happen, I have no idea, but when that does happen, I want to make sure that I am ready for it. Like, my backlist is on point, and that's what this is for, for whenever I decide to write again. I won't have to worry about my backlist. I'll just have to worry about going forward and my front list and the books that I want to write. I might release again next year. 
I don't know yet. Like, I have a few books that have been on my mind for the last five years that I've wanted to write since the very beginning of starting Lyra Parish, and they're started, guys. Like, I've got a book about a landlord. I've got a book about a movie producer. I've got a book about a photographer, and I've got so many other books that are started that I just never finished that I have wanted to finish. I just haven't had time for it. And so my goal ultimately is to finish writing those passion projects of mine that I wanted to write a long time ago that I'd never finished. They're just, <laughs> they're sitting on my Google Drive, like just chilling, just waiting on a cliffhanger, a forever cliffhanger. And I am super excited about it. I know that redoing my backlist is going to be a lot of work and that's step one. But then after I do that, I will probably start releasing again. And it's not gonna be at some great magnitude that Kennedy Fox is because we release six books a year. It might be one book or two books. It might be three books. It's not gonna be 100,000 words. I can promise you that, but it's probably not going to be novellas either. Uh, I have 30 minutes at work to spend every day, and because of my writing hack, I will put a link up here, because, or up here, because of that writing hack that I have with my iPad, I can get over a thousand words per day in 30 minutes, and if you count that up, that's 5,000 words in a week. Um, that's 25 to 30,000 words in a month. And that's a book, guys. If I wanted to write under Lyra, all I have to do is spend my lunch breaks at work writing for that 30 minutes. And I'm there and I've got the book ready to go. But right now, like I said, I am spending my time working on that backlist. And then when I'm done with that, then we'll see what the future holds. I'm super excited about everything that's going on in my life right now with Publishable, with Kennedy Fox, with Lyra Parrish. I've just got a lot of stuff happening in my literary world. And it's just going to get more busy. Whenever I quit my job, which I hope will be next year, if it's not, then you know what? It happens when it happens, but I'm going to be able to keep myself busy whenever I don't have a day job, whenever I don't have somewhere to be eight to nine to ten hours of my life every day, and that's what all this is for. All this is to set myself up for success whenever I do make that plunge into being a full-time author, and I am so freaking excited that all of you are coming along with me on this giant journey. When I do quit my job, there will be a vlog. Like, that's all I gotta say. And I'm not gonna keep that a secret from people. I've heard stories about, you know, keeping quitting their job secret. No, when I quit my job, you all in the internet and every person I know will be will be in the know, trust me. Like it's it's happening, it's happening right now and I'm here for it and I know that you're here for it too. Before I ramble on any longer about what is going on in my life, I'm gonna go ahead and end it right here. So remember March 20th, there will be a premiere for our second publishable episode right here on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not. And I hope that you have an awesome, amazing week. You accomplish everything that you want and you write all those words and I'll see you again in my next video. Okay guys, bye.